Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Thanks for joining. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. I, I always appreciate any support that I can get, whether it's likes, comments, questions, special requests, and most of all, subscribing. <laughs> all right, so let's get started. I wanted to show you my website because if all else fails, you can always go onto the website and up here under the main, you know, the main header is you can go to projects and in projects you can find all of my projects and it has all the information for the project because I know a lot, some followers are only on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube and so what happens is you only get uh what is posted to those channels, right? Like for YouTube, you don't even get pictures, right? You just get my tutorial, the, the thumbnail, uh, and then you actually get this. But if you wanted to see more behind the scenes pictures, um, you can always go here. There's links to everything. So like the link to the Amazon boxes, but I'll scroll down so you can kind of see a little bit more. So there's always the links to the YouTube tutorials. So worst case is if you can't find it on YouTube, you can go over here and search as well. And then you can see all the pictures that I've used. So it's kind of nice. Um, and then I'll give you, you know, related content, uh, like the Santa cam ornament. Then you can go to that one and see everything. Um, there's also resources, which is uh, all my links in general, things that I like to use in the craft room. Um, shop you can get the svg files and then of course you can contact me and um you know for a special request or if you wanted pricing for something and then just some a fun little bio about me <laughs> all right so i wanted to show you that let's go back and this is the etsy designer that i use it's your mini designer it's so stinking cute i absolutely loved this design so if you buy it, like I did, then you can um, download it and then we'll go into design space right now. This is a duplicate um, tutorial because the first one, the sound was really bad. So I apologize for that. Hopefully the sound is coming through on this one. So when you go in, this is a print and cut project. So it's all attached. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Let me make this a little bit smaller so we can kind of see how it comes in. It, um, it came in as two separate um, PDFs or PNG files, whatever it is. It's not an SVG file because we're going to be printing it. You're going to send it to your printer and then you're going to cut it. So for instance, um, I'll show you right now. So I used brown cardstock paper. The reason why you see this is I hand cut this because my printer has an issue with printing thicker paper. So this is mm, probably 65 pound paper. Um, so when it prints, I don't know if you can see it, but it print, it pulled the paper a little bit, it tilted a little bit. So my rectangle is not um, parallel with the paper. Now, in theory, Design Space or Cr Cricut, our machine should be able to read the sensor lines and should know where this is. But I've known from, from personal experience with my Cricut um, is if it doesn't print out perfectly, like the way you see it on your computer, like perfectly even, it will not cut properly. So that's why I went and cut myself. This is a very easy file to cut. So technically you don't need your Cricut. I mean, it's just straight lines. So I just went in and you know I've been having issues with my wrist. So if I'm telling you it's easy, it's easy. Um, I did all, mm, I did all the small ones. I did use print and cut, like I used my, um, because some of these labels are teeny tiny. They like, look it, I don't know if you can even see how small it is. It's smaller than my nail. So it's super cute. It can cut like that. I'm just currently having issues with my print then cut, which I did calibrate my machine and it got better. But um, with this one, I just didn't even want to mess with it. All right. So let's talk about print then cut. So the way you see it now, technically, all you have to do is you need to resize it so that your Cricut can cut it. 
With print then cut, you are limited to 6.75 inches by 9.25 inches. So that means something like this, 13.2 by 21.8, obviously, we can't print it. I mean, you, your printer probably can't even print it, but definitely your Cricut won't be able to. So what we can do is we can go to, let's say, the bigger measurement is the height, right? It's 21 inches. You could do 9.25 and see it resizes to 9.25 and 5.791, which is great. You could, you could cut it as is, right? But depending on what you plan on doing with it, so I don't have it right here with me, darn it. I put my Amazon boxes in here and then I did the words, here comes Amazon, here comes Amazon. So, um, you know, this has size restrictions, right? I don't know. Um, I'm limited, my bulb is two, the bottom circle is only two inches. This is three inches across, but if I can't get my presents in, my boxes in, right, then it doesn't matter. So it has to be smaller than two inches. So the way I looked at this was, I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna make this really big so we, actually we can really see this here. This reminds me so much of middle school math. So this is the box unfolded, right? It's flat out. So when you go to fold it, this middle box right here, this is your length and your width. So you need to size this so that these two measurements right here fit wherever you want it to fit, right? So inside the ornament, um, I don't know, if you're doing some sort of like table decoration, you have a specific size in mind. Those, these are the two lines that you're looking for, this line and this line. So when you go to measure this, you can even do it straight from here, right? You can see, I'm gonna line this up. Hold on, I'm gonna line, ah! Oh my gosh, it's not, too, okay, there. I'm lining this up at the 10 inch line, okay? So it's going 10 inches, 11 inches, 12 inches, 13 inches. So right now my box is three inches wide. First of all, that's too big, right? Um, so that's how you wanna measure it. The other thing that I wanna point out is, and let's make this small again. So I'm gonna change this to 9.25 because that's the max that you can cut it as is, right? But we're gonna make some changes to it. It has some instructions that came in with it. So we don't need that to print, right? And let's look at this one. There's a lot of spacing in between here that um, normally I don't wanna waste, right? I wanna cut more, but normally I'm cutting on sticker paper, which I feel like sticker paper is expensive. And so I wanna cram everything in. I wanna put as many stickers as I can. But here we're printing on paper. So if you are not mm, as paper conscious, um, you know, cause you're just printing like this, then you can just print, you can print it like this, or you can, you know, I'll show you how to break apart the pieces. All right. So what you do to break apart the pieces is you're gonna be slicing, okay? We're gonna be slicing out each individual box so that the box will be by itself. So when you do that, you need to insert a, I'll insert a square, it doesn't matter what shape. What's important about the shape is that only the, whatever object you want to separate from the group has to be completely covered in the shape, okay? And what I mean by that is you see how we might have to do this in two parts. I'm going to, I'll make this bigger so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I wanna get rid of the words, right? But the words kind of go up. Like, I don't think I can do, I, I can get this part, right? But this part sticks out. But if I do this, then I cut some of the box off. So we'll have to slice two times to get rid of the words. So I'm gonna put my square right here. It's only covering the words, right? So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna take my mouse and grab these two items because you're gonna only slice two items at a time. So I'm slicing the image with my square and I'm gonna click on slice. So now most of the instructions will be separated from the image. And as soon as it happens, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and you, oh my gosh, it's so slow today. Here we go. 
See, so now that's gone, right? We still have this part, but this part's easy. We can use the same square even, and I'm just going to, geez Louise, it's like not wanting to. Right, I'm gonna flip it so that it's clean, so that I have more surface area to completely cover the words right here. And I'm gonna slice again. And this time when I slice, all of the instructions are gonna be gone and I'm gonna have just the boxes. You can leave it like that or you can continue doing this exercise, right, of separating each box from the group until you get down to one box. So I'm gonna delete all of this because we don't need it. Right, delete all this excess. And see, now my instructions are completely gone. So if you remember before, we had made this box 9.25, right? It's now gone down to just under eight inches because we got rid of the instructions. So you could at this point now make it bigger again. But again, what you wanna do is you want to do your specific size and the two, um, the two measurements that you're gonna make is this measurement right here and this measurement right here. That's gonna be your length and your width, okay, of your box. Um, okay, so that's there. Let's look at this one. I'm gonna make this one smaller just so that we can get it onto the screen. Now with this, because the labels are, they already have the printed labels on here, but it's super cute to add that extra layer because then it looks more legitimate. It looks like you had a little sticker with the mailing label and you're, you're adding it on. So I printed it just like this, the way it is, and then I cut out these little labels and I taped it on and it just looks so realistic. I absolutely love it. Um, so this is totally print then cut. This is print then cut, but I used the brown paper and it's so cute. I wish, I'm so bummed that I don't have it in my art room right now to show you, but I'm gonna fold this up really, really quickly. It's so easy to fold. That's the next tutorial, which is already posted. Anywhere that you see a line, you're folding. And I'm gonna try to just show you really quickly from here um, what that kind of looks like. So you can kind of already get the shape. It's so stinking cute. Okay, so, all right. So when you go print this, I'm gonna show you. Okay, I'm almost done. Look at how easy that was. You saw how quickly I folded that? Look at, I mean, this side's a hot mess because I didn't do anything yet, but look at how cute. So this is the line, this is the length right here. This is the width right here. And if you wanted the height, the height is this one right here. So, you know, like if you, you know, when you're printing your own mailing labels, right? You have your length, your width, and your height. It's all right here. So you can actually figure out how big you want your boxes. All right, let me see. Um, all right, let's finish these three. I'm gonna separate these three. I'm not gonna do anything with this one because once you learn how to do this, you can do this one. So I'm actually gonna delete this for now, okay? Um, let's go through that process of slicing out each one of these boxes because then you can make boxes of different sizes for different projects and also you can maximize how much you print on that piece of paper. So I know there are just the three boxes. I'm covering this one completely. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna slice it and it's gonna remove itself from the group. So what's left in the group will be two boxes right here, right? And then we have this. We can get rid of your slice results. We don't need that box. And here's the one box by itself. So you can resize this accordingly. Now on this one, I'm gonna move this over and I bring this down and I'm gonna slice out this top box. And I'm gonna make sure the top box is completely covered in my square so that I get a clean slice. So I'm gonna grab these two items and slice it out. Now, if you are like me, I ended up printing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven boxes on this eight and a half by 11 paper, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, let's get rid of the slice results. And this will apply to any print and cut if you're trying to maximize your cuts, okay? So let's see what 
I'm just gonna hit make it right now so we can see how um, Design Space group this these three boxes together, okay? So it's gonna print out like this. And so for me, when I see this, I'm like, oh, we still have space. Like I can cut a few more items on here, right? So let's cancel out of this. Let's see if we can fit another set. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate it. And then let's go to make it and see what it looks like. So make it is saying, design space is saying, <clears throat> I can only fit five boxes on one and on the next page is this lonely one. Let's see if we can fit all six on one, okay? So I'm gonna cancel out of this. The way you would go about doing that is to bring in a shape, bring in a square. We're gonna unlock it. We're gonna make it the size, the max size that we can do print then cut. So we're gonna unlock this, change our width to 9.25, change our height, to 6.75 and this is the max size that we can print and cut right so now I'm going to arrange and send to the back this uh, rectangle is just there so that I know where to put all my pieces okay so here we go we've got we're gonna see if we can fit all six on here okay and I think I think we can all right, we're so close right now. Um, move this over here. Maybe flip this around. Okay, I'm gonna move this up just a little bit more to the edge. I'm gonna move this one up a little bit more. And yeah, see, we can fit all of this on here. In fact, it wasn't even that hard, right? But if you were making stickers, in fact, I actually think there's a possibility of fitting another box. So let's see if we can do that. So we went from being able to print only five to now I think we're gonna be able to fit seven. So I'm gonna move this up a little bit more. This one, I'm gonna flip this way. I don't even think I need to do that, but I'm going to. And look, we can, right? So. What you wanna do now that you've configured your spacing, right? We're gonna grab the rectangle. We don't need that anymore. We're just gonna delete it. And this, we're going to attach. We're gonna attach it so that it moves as one project. So now when we go to make it, let's see what it looks like. It should print on one, because our, see it all, yes. Yes, yes, right, it all fits, okay? So it all fit on one, all seven boxes, but I'll show you what Design Space would have done. So all we do is we go back here, we detach it, and this is just a fun experiment. <laughs> Click on Make It, and it's gonna be on at least two pages. Yep. So see, you, but now with one page, it's just so much, easier right because you're only going to print once and then you go and you cut it once instead of printing twice two different sheets and then cutting twice here so um i'm pointing as if you know where my printer is my printer is over there and my cricut machine's right here <laughs> okay i hope that was helpful please let me know i apologize for that audio issue i it's been going crazy over here. Um, anyway, enjoy making this thing. It's so fun. If you wanna do the here comes Amazon thing again, I would just, I did my own fonts. I've seen a ton of these. You just wanna make sure that it fits. The nice thing about this bulb, this is from the Dollar Tree, is while it's, you know, um, uh, round, it's, it's uh, of the same length or width circumference all the way so it's flat it's easy to apply i definitely like it it was it was easy peasy and then i used faux snow from the dollar tree as well so um my only tip for the here comes amazon is the words here comes i would do one font and then amazon i would do a separate font and then i would make amazon equal almost equal to the length of here comes so you have a very um like uh, balance
balanced, <laughs> balanced saying. And it goes right in the front right here. It's so much fun. All right. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Um, thank you for following. We have such fun things coming up next year. So I hope you stay for the ride. A lot of fun stuff. And actually, um, I'm going live tomorrow on Instagram because this will post today. I know the, the dates are all crazy. Today is December 14th. I re-recorded it so that it can post today. Tomorrow on the 15th, I'm going live on Instagram and anyone who is on the live has a chance to win a Cricut Air 2 bundle. So it's the Air 2 plus supplies. Ivy and I, I from Ivy Pink Made, we're going live. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're probably just gonna pick a number and someone's name is gonna pop up and that person wins the bundle and they can either accept it or they can actually use it as a Christmas gift to give to someone. We will mail it anywhere in the US. So anyway, I hope to see you there. It's such great odds, right? Because you have to be on. You wouldn't know about it unless you're following us. So it's a really limited crowd, great chances to win, and I hope that one of you guys win. All right, thank you so much. Bye, guys.